Hey everybody, it's Skalmadex, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena. Today I will be playing my very first draft of Streets of New Capenna. This is part of the Early Access event, so this account was provided to me by Wizards of the Coast for today and today only. Without further ado, let's check out what we've got in our pack one. So we've got a pretty sweet rare, Cut of the Profits, for two black and X. You can draw X cards and lose X life. It is a painful draw spell, but it can draw a lot of cards. You can also copy it by sacrificing a creature with power three or greater. That is the Maestro's mechanic. So solid card, but I really like some of these uncommons as well. We've got the Forge Boss as a four mana three four. Whenever you sacrifice one or more creatures, you need to deal two to each opponent. It only triggers once each turn, but that works really well with Casualty and with Blitz, which is the uh, Riveteer's mechanic that we'll see on Pugnacious Pugilist here, which is going to be the card that I take. Pugnacious Pugilist is a 5 mana 4 4 that creates a 1 1 red devil attacking every time it attacks, and you can blitz it out for 4 mana to play it as a haste creature, which will then get sacrificed at your end step and draw you a card when it dies. So I've really been a fan of the Pugnacious Pugilist at. Uh, at my pre-release sealed events, and it's just a good stat line for the amount of mana that it costs on either the Blitz or the hard casting uh, cost. So let's see what we have. Pack one, pick two. Decent white removal spell here, the knockout blow. Not the greatest because it only hits attacking or blocking creatures, but it is fine. A little expensive too, three mana for four damage, but you gain some life off of it to kind of pay you back a bit. There is Exhibition Magician here, and I do think that treasure tokens are quite good in this format, so I'm pretty high on Exhibition Magician right now, at least from my experience in the pre-release. Maybe too high on it, but I think that's actually going to be my pick here. Just going to be Exhibition Magician. Actually, I didn't even notice the Jewel Thief, which is a better version of Exhibition Magician. This is a 3 mana, 3-3 three, three Vigilance Trample, and when it enters the battlefield, create a treasure token. Jewel Thief is easily going to be the pick here. One thing to consider in your early picks is it is better to stay in allied colors when you can than enemy colors, so that would be a reason to value green cards more highly than white cards if you start with a red card, because if I go red and white, there's only one three color family that's going to have red and white in it. That's the Cabaretti at uh, red, white, and green. But if I go into red, green, I'm open to going Cabaretti at red, green, white, or Riveteers red, green, black. So that is another reason Jewel Thief's pretty sweet there. It's just a better color to pick after a red um, pack one, pick one. So here we have Body Dropper, which is fine. Pretty good with Blitz, because it's going to keep getting bigger every time you sack a creature to your Blitz stuff. Masked Bandits is nice. I am a big fan of all of the mana-fixing creatures. They're all pretty good stat lines for their cost later in the game, and they give you that early game mana-fixing. 5-5 five, five Vigilance Menace is quite a game-ender. I might just take the Masked Bandits here. I'm, I'm down for Sly Cooper. Pick four now. We see another cut of the profits. Again, it, it's a very risky kind of risk-reward draw spell. Not going to be super high on it. I think I'm just going to pass it again here uh, to whoever wants it. Uh, we have Hold for Ransom. If we go into the Cabaretti, we can use this as a removal spell. We have Exhibition Magician for just some more treasure tokens, which I'm a fan of. Prize Fight does give us a treasure token in fights, but this card has underperformed a little for me in the pre-release because I've had a lot of decks with the creatures just aren't big enough. But here we do have a 5-5, five, five, a 4-4. Four, four. These are creatures that are big enough to be brawling with a prize fight. So it seems not bad. Kaldaya Strongarm also seems pretty solid because you can blitz it out for four. You get to keep the plus two, plus two counters, or the two plus one, plus one counters on whatever you target, and, you know, attack in for two, draw your card. Um, so that's nice. Um, but I might just be on Magician here. Just take Mana Fixing super highly. Take the Treasure Token super highly. We get a bunch of Mana Fixing lands here, which is beautiful. I think Ceremonial Groundbreaker could be a strong card as well. There are a lot of cards to produce Citizen Tokens, and we do have one in our deck already, um, but I don't think I'm pushing into green-white for it this early. The Exhibition Magician gives us the option of getting a 1-1 Citizen. Well, I think my main goal in this video is to just say Exhibition Magician as many times as possible. Uh, if I'm being honest. Uh, so yeah, this pack has Hold for Ransom and a great cheap removal spell. Pretty much just as good as Pacifism, if I'm being honest. It's technically a strictly worse Pacifism because your opponent has the option of killing it later, but when they kill it, they have to spend seven mana to do it, which is basically skipping their turn, and they let you draw a card to replace it, so it feels pretty much just as good as Pacifism was. Um, but here I'm going to take Riveter's Overlook. The three-color Evolving Wilds lands are really nice, especially when you get completely on-color ones like that. Currently, we're only in green, red, and black, so picking up a mana fixer that picks up green, red, black is really nice. And now we can just pick up another one 
um, at no real cost here, because again, none of these cards are really good for what we're doing. I think the best card in the pack is probably Obscura Initiate. We're pretty far from being a blue deck. There's only one red-blue um, group, and that's the Maestros, red, blue, black, and there's only one green, blue group, and that is the Brokers, green, white, blue. We're pretty unlikely to be in either of those, because we have three red cards already. So don't think it's Obscura Initiate. I think it's just Riveteer's Overlook, or maybe even Tramway Station. Um, I'm actually going to take Tramway Station over the Riveteer's Overlook since we already have one of them, and I do really like the flexibility of having a land that actually produces two different colors of mana. The Overlook does technically get you whatever color you want out of three different choices, but it only taps for the one at a time, which is a moderately big deal, whereas this Tramway Station can tap for two different ones. Um, but yeah, Riveteer's Overlook, once you've picked your color, it's, it's locked in. Uh, this pack's pretty easy, just like ready to rumble. Kind of a slow removal spell, but a removal spell nonetheless. I guess we could go Crooked Custodian uh, instead if we want to just be aggressive. But we don't have any removal yet. 2 mana 3, 2. It's pretty solid size for limited. Maybe maybe try the Custodian there. But I'll go with ready to rumble this early in the format. Removal is just always good. It's uh, just a really simple pick there. Haven't been a massive fan of the Rocks Pummeler. It's really low toughness, and all they have to do to get rid of the shield counter is deal one single point of damage to it. Um, that being said, having Trample while it has the shield counter means it is going to be hitting them a bit the first time you get it in. But I think I would prefer just like Demons do here. This seems like a solid draw spell. Scry 2, draw 2. As far as Adjudicators, is definitely great as well. I love these mana fixers, but we'll go Demons do. We're not really heading towards green, white, blue here at all. Ominous Parcel is a really flexible card. I love this one quite a bit as well. You get to sacrifice this to search for any basic land, reveal it and put it into your hand, or sacrifice it to deal 4 damage to target creature if you have enough mana later in the game. So real flexible card. Pulls out whatever color of mana you need in the early game, or use it as a decent removal spell in the late game. Like me an Ominous Parcel. So... Don't really have any cheap creatures yet. We could take a Tavern Swindler, just have a 2-drop, but that's basically just a 2-mana two 2-2 two, two with no text. Don't love Maestro's Initiate with that really low toughness, but it does give us an, an ability from the grave. Revel Ruiner seems pretty solid. Menace, nice connive. Take a Revel Ruiner here, I guess. Try it out. Still early enough in the format. All of the kind of mid-range, average-looking creatures. Not sure how I value them yet in comparison to each other. Oh, nobody wants this uh, cut of the profits. I don't think I'm going to be that aggressive that I want the one mana 2-1 cutthroat contender, but it does work with casualty being able to sack itself as a two power creature, but I don't know. We'll take cut of the profits here. And maybe try that out. Maybe we'll be the one person to get bold enough to lose a bunch of life to draw a bunch of cards. Pack two now. We have Cabaretti Courtyard for a red-green mana fixer, Maestro's Theater for a black-red mana fixer, even if we're just in Riveteers. And obviously, if we're in more colors, they'll fix even more colors. We've got that 2 mana 3 2 again. We've got the Ready to Rumble again. We've got Bouncers Beat Down to deal X to target creature or Planeswalker, where X is the greatest power among our creatures. This is pretty nice. This is probably the best green removal spell in the format. I think I'm pretty happy to take Bouncers Beat Down. Our black cards aren't super strong, though, and I think Darling of the Masses is really strong, so maybe we move over to Cabaretti instead. But the citizen producing cards have seemed pretty good to me. Going citizen tribal a bit seems nice. We just cut demons do some revel ruiners, cut of the profits. I'm actually going to take darling of the masses here. Card has been impressive to me. And again, if we just focus on green red at the core, then we have that flexibility of deciding between green red white or green red black. Um, just based on what we get past. I don't actually think Cabaretti Charm is all that good. It's one of the weakest charms. It is kind of an instant speed overrun. Give your whole field plus one plus one trample till end of turn. Which is nice. The ability to shoot something for a couple points of damage with the first part is nice too. Or make citizens an instant speed is nice. But I don't think any of that compares to just the incredible rate that you get off of Jewel Thief. And actually if we're looking at the white cards here. Even Inspiring Overseer is an incredibly good deal. That might even be... It's definitely on par with Jewel Thief at worst, um, but Jewel Thief is in the color that we're more guaranteed to be in. We're definitely green-red, maybe in white, maybe in black. We'll take Jewel Thief here. 
All right, Incandescent Aria, I believe we're going to be Cabaretti then. Incandescent Aria, three damage to each non-token creature. So this can be a one-sided board wipe. Usually, though, it is just going to be like a little small board wipe. But it's a board wipe that makes sure all of your citizens stay on the board, and we're trying to make some citizens. We even have some devil tokens and stuff. Seems solid. It's also red, green, white, so it's definitely more likely to wheel than anything else in this pack, like if we want to just take a light up for just cheap removal, um, rather than the whole wrath effect. But I guess if we're going to cast light up, we might as well just cast Aria and deal three to everything instead of two to one thing. I don't know. We'll try out the Aria here. It seems strong if we can set it up well. And now we see another Jewel Thief, a light em up. Those are probably the best cards here. I do like Big Score as well. Discard a card, draw two cards, and create two treasure tokens. Treasure tokens are really nice, helping you get that splash for a fourth color in when you've got some kind of powerful off-color card, like maybe an Endless Detour or something like that. Um, but I'm just going to keep taking as many Jewel Thieves as I can. This card reads incredibly powerful. Three mana, three, three, Vigilance, Trample, Treasure Token, just absurd. Ooh, 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 I love Courier's Briefcase absolutely loved that card every time I cast it in the pre-release, but Cleanup Crew has also been really good. This is just a really flexible 6-drop. Six, 6 mana 6-6 six, six that gains for life if you just need to stabilize, or if your opponent has a good artifact or enchantment on the board, being able to blow it up is nice, or if they have Graveyard Recursion, you can exile a card from the graveyard. It's just so flexible. So Cleanup Crew is excellent. Courier's Briefcase is quite good. Gives us a 1-1 one, one and it sacks as a treasure token, or if we get enough treasure late game, we can sack this to draw 3. It's also a fun rare there, but that seems a bit much to build around. I'm going to go with Courier's Briefcase. I really, maybe I'm overvaluing this card, but I really want to show it off. I think this card has been really, really good for me, especially in decks with treasure production to where you can sacrifice the briefcase later on um, for three colors sometimes. But it's really nice because like you're always okay with just a two mana one one that you can have a treasure token appear alongside it. So you just sack the briefcase when you need a treasure token. And then it just has that backup plan of draw three being so powerful. Here's going to be an easy light em up. Nice cheap removal. Uh, Riveteer's Overlook, nice and late. That's super good for us. Just a green red mana fixer. Or it can pull out maybe our one swamp if we end up splashing in just like one black card. But I think we are pushing to just Cabaretti here, so we're going to remove all of our black cards except for one. And that one we're not going to remove is Masked Bandits, because this card mana fixes for itself. Even if we have zero black sources in the deck, this card can cast itself by making one of our lands able to produce black mana. And it still mana fixes us on green and red, which are the colors that matter for us. Uh, take another Masked Bandits or a Ready to Rumble here. Um, I'll take another Masked Bandits, I suppose. Um, yeah, because these ready to rebels are just going nice and late. We can just pick one up now, I guess. Certainly kind of a high curve here. We've got plenty at three mana, but I'm definitely looking for some more two mana cards. You definitely don't want too many one mana cards in this format because you're going to have a lot of tapped lands in most decks. But I could certainly use more stuff to do at two mana. And because black is being pushed into the splash territory, or maybe even not at all, we'll take the knockout blow here. Fine little removal spell in white. All right, removal. There we go. There's a two drop that's perfectly playable. A two mana two one that gets plus one plus one until end of turn every time we play a creature. So if we're repeatedly just curving out, basically a two mana three two. Warm welcome seems okay, but we have some pretty premium three drops. The triple jewel thief. Kind of taking up the three drop slot, so I'll just take another little two drop creature here. So now we have three attended socialite, civic gardener, and courier's briefcase. Um, I don't love initiates, so I'll just take a Capenna Express, but I'm probably not playing that. Or the Gilded Pinions. And let's see what we open up in the final pack. Wow. All right, we open up an incredible white rare, so we're pretty happy to have pushed into the Cabaretti instead of the Riveteers, because Sanctuary Warden's a busted card. If you're playing against somebody that does not have removal that can exile or bounce this card, they're going to have an incredibly hard time killing something that has two shield counters on it, and it's a big old flyer. It can sit there, it can draw cards and make 1-1s one if you have more cards with counters on them. Sanctuary Warden is an absurd magic card and one of the biggest bombs in the format. 
Now we have Civil Servant. This is one of my favorite two drops in the format to the point where I'm going to take it over Cabaretti Charm, which might seem a little wild to some, but I love Civil Servant. This is a two mana, two, three, already a decent stat line for two mana. And as long as you have a citizen on the board, this can attack in as a three, three lifelinker, which is really, really hard to race. And we've already got some good citizen producing cards. We have the Civic Gardener being a human citizen, the Courier's Briefcase spitting out a citizen, Exhibition Magician can spit out a citizen, and Darling of the Masses can make citizens and is a citizen itself so i love me a civil steward here i think civil servant i got the name wrong all right and we're still on that uh, that citizen tribal deck so i think another darling of the masses could be incredible for us we are taking it over bouncer's beat down which would be a solid card in this deck it's going to let our curve of removal get a little lower like we can just still run a lot of removal and then this way we get to cut one of our five mana removal spells for a nice cheap three or maybe even one mana removal spell but darling of the masses just seems like such a synergistic and powerful card in this deck i don't think we can pass up on it so darling of the masses i shall take now we see another Civil Servant, which I am going to take over the Cabaretti Courtyard, again because it's just such a powerful card for a deck with a high citizen count, which we absolutely have now. And now we see a third Civil Servant or Ceremonial Groundbaker. The citizen deck absolutely popping off. This is a really hard choice, but I think I'm just going to take a third Civil Servant. I, I genuinely don't think... At this point in the format, it's really early in the format. Again, this is this is day negative two. This is the early access event. Um, but at this point in the format, I've just ah, I'm absolutely smitten by the civil servant. Look at them; they are so handsome. All right. Um, okay, now there's pretty much nothing in this pack. We could sit here getting some random treasure tokens with this big booty dork, or we have just like a five mana four or five. Filler late game creature, filler early game creature. I feel like we have a lot of good two drops right now. I'll just take the big filler late game card, I guess. We do have a decent amount of treasure production for use with Jetmere's Fixer, but I can't see us making room for Jetmere's Fixer over three Civil Servant Courier's Briefcase Civic Gardener being kind of our five two mana creatures. That being said, we're not going to have room for Rock's Pound where it's six mana. I don't think I'm playing that. I don't love Paragon of Modernity. Scuttling Butler, you need like a lot of multicolored for her. I don't know. Maybe we'll try Scuttling Butler. I think pretty much anything we take there is quite likely to get cut. Uh, so here's another solid two drop, the Mayhem Patrol. Two mana for a one, two menace. Every time it attacks, you give a creature plus one, plus oh until end of turn. So kind of a two mana, two, two menace by itself. It can also stack up on one of your other creatures to let it attack in well. Like if your opponent has only a four, four out, then this just gets by by being menace while making your three power creature a four power creature on the attack so that both your creatures can attack in well. So it's kind of spicy. Um, I feel like our two drop slot is nice and chocked full of stuff here. So I'm going to take another ominous parcel. Make sure our mana fixing is all good. And the great part of Ominous Parcel is if you already have all three of your colors, then just let it sit there for a while and become your five mana, four damage removal spell. Pretty big fan of how this deck is looking here. Incandescent Aria is definitely looking pretty awkward, but I think we still run it. And that's just our, our safety button. That's our panic button there. But we are rarely going to want to cast that. We are almost always, it looks like, going to be just curving out and being on the aggressive. We're dropping Civil Servants on two and Jewel Thieves on three. Like, good lord. Take a Bird Citizen here. Well, I suppose the Cabaretti Initiate is a Raccoon Citizen. So that is worth noting. Chrome Cat's really easy to cast. Mm, I don't think we're playing this Initiate, but it is a Citizen. And we could try to play Angelic Observer. See how high our citizen count is for that. Maybe this will be a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three flying. That's where you're getting a deal. If you're making a 4-mana three, 3-3 three flyer, that's fine in this format. Flyers are good. But anything more than 4-mana for the flyer is not great. Might take Warm Welcome this time. Um, anything more than 4-mana for a 3-3 three, three flyer is not a great deal. And anything less is definitely a great deal. So the sweet spot is consistently being 4-mana or less for that angel um that is i did the wrong thing which is sorted by creature but i didn't even look down here yet there we go now we sort by creature so here's the deck this looks spicy to me 
With the citizen theme being the primary theme of green white, the primary theme of Selesnya, we kind of push into primarily green white here and start cutting down on the red cards so we can consistently hit our green and white sources in their early games. So we can always be playing turn two civil servant. So we should probably actually cut cards like Mayhem Patrol. Um, light em up is a removal spell, so we can wait on it until later. And Exhibition Magician. Is this good enough to keep in, even though it's an early game red card? Probably, but I'll put it to the side for now. But this makes our mana really easy, because Incandescent Aria is also a late game card. So then everything that we need to cast turn four or sooner is just a green or white card. So we can play a really high green and white land count and just rely on the Riveteer's Overlooks to pull out red sources when we need them. And uh, yeah, maybe Masked Bandit's producing red mana as well. Yeah, I, I like this a lot. I like that idea. Let's see how things are looking here. 21 creatures, 9 non-creatures. 21 is plenty creatures. So we definitely start by cutting some creatures here. Um, what else did I want to see? I hate this new layout. I, I get so confused every time I open it up as to what's going on. So I immediately forgot what I was even checking up on here, really. I guess mainly the creature, non-creature count. So yeah, 21 creatures is a lot. We're probably not doing the scuttling butler thing. You need non... You need multicolored permanents. You need two of them to give it double strike. I mean, theoretically, if we get the magical Christmas land dream where we sandwich this in the middle of a turn two civil steward, civil servant, I don't know why I always call it that, and then a turn four darling of the masses, that would be the dream curve. Civil servant... Scuttling Butler, Darling of the Masses, now I have a 4-1 double strike, but it's still a 1 toughness creature. It's still, even though it's going to be a 4-1 double strike, very flimsy to any removal, because it'll die to any damage-based removal, like Light Him Up that does 2 damage, anything like that. I don't think I'm playing the Scuttling Butler. It's going to be really bad if it doesn't have double strike, and even when it does have double strike, it's going to be pretty easy to kill um, with removal spells. I mean, we could theoretically just drop red entirely, couldn't we? We're just a two-color aggro deck here. Really punish the more multicolored heavy decks. Then our briefcase is definitely less good, but it still makes a citizen and gives us the treasure to dump out a Sanctuary Warden a turn early. Treasures aren't just good for mana fixing. They'll also get an early cast of something bigger later. So having Courier's Briefcase and Triple Jewel Thief, I mean, we can jam out our six drops on turn five. Uh, let's see, we need to cut six cards. No, we have to keep at least a little bit of red because this is more than six cards over here right now. Unless we have more green-white, we could slap in. Theoretically, we could play Gilded Pinions, Scuttling Butler, Cabaret Initiate, and Capenna Express. We have to run some very filler stuff to entirely cut red. Okay, so I don't think that's happening. Where are our best late-game red cards? Don't have a ton of removal. We have two Ominous Parcel. One Knockout Blow. Run a couple Ready to Rumbles at five. Run our one Incandescent Aria. Need to cut six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards to cut here. We only need to cut six so we could throw like Pugilist back in as a four drop kind of blitz way to just get a bunch of damage in. We don't need double red to cast this, because we can blitz it for a single red. That, or we could just put light em up back in instead. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 creatures here, if you count Courier's Briefcase, 17 if you count Warm Welcome. If we run it like this and cut the light em up, then we would definitely cut Tramway Station at that point if we're not playing Masked Bandits anymore. So the only way we get to cycle Tramway Station would be off of a treasure token. I think that's pretty cool with me. I mean, maybe we want to light them up over two ready to rumble, just one ready to rumble, one light them up. We don't have great removal for bigger creatures though. So removal stops at anything that has four more toughness. But I mean, ready to rumble stops at five toughness, it's only one more damage. I don't know, I think having more cheap removal is going to be nice here with the aggressive two drops we have again. I think I'll go light them up over ready to rumble, but then that we can call a deck. Six, seven, eight, nine. 
15, 16, 17, 17 lands here. Three red sources and two lands that can pull them out. The Riveteer's Overlook. Six green, six white. Does that look good to me? Maybe a little more green. Actually, no, this is probably perfect. We have 14 green cards, 10 white cards, and four red cards. But we have two lands that pull out green sources, none that pull out white sources. So we kind of have eight ways to get green mana. Six ways to get white mana and five ways to get red. Five on red might be a bit much, especially when we have Ominous Parcel as well, which can be cracked later in the game when we need that kind of mana. And again, we don't need need red mana until probably four to play Pugilist. The only way we're going to be hard casting it instead of blitzing it is with treasure tokens. But I'm okay with that because blitzing it is still a good deal and we have a good amount of treasure. Three jewel thieves, courier's briefcase, and we can get the one natural mountain. So one natural mountain with the aid of a treasure token can cast a pugilist. Yeah, I'm cool with it. I think I think this is where I want to be. I want to cut a mountain for planes. Call it a day. It's eight green sources, seven white sources, two red. Well, four red. Green does give us our treasure producers, though. Courier's Briefcase and Jewel Thief. All four of those that can get a man of any color do require green mana to get running. So maybe we actually do just keep with the six white sources and just go up to nine green sources for red. That's probably better. That's probably better. And I like Warm Welcome. Um, this card isn't like wild. It isn't super good and I wouldn't put it in every deck, but I would put it in decks that have like a specific really big balmy creature to dig towards because you're digging five cards deeper to it. Even if you don't see it in the top five, you're getting five cards out of the way that aren't that card, so you're closer to drawing it. So Warm Welcome is nice when we're trying to hit Sanctuary Wardens and Darling of the Masses. I think Warm Welcome seems fine in here. But that does look like one of our most cuttable cards out of everything in here. I mean, other than the, other than the pretty medium two drops that are kind of just in here to be aggressive. And we're playing Angelic Overseer or Angelic Observer to try it out. Good citizen count in here, though. Seven citizens, as well as briefcase making a citizen. Warm welcome making citizen. That's eight citizens. So Observer might do some things. We'll see. We'll see how it plays. And of course, Darling of the Mass is creating more citizens as it attacks. This looks like a really fun deck. And that's going to be the final build of the deck. So without further ado, let's head into round one and see how it performs. Here we are in round one. This is a pretty awkward hand. We can definitely deal with our opponent's early plays. We knock out blow one. We can Ominous Parcel another. We're not really doing anything till turn six. I don't know if it's worth the mulligan. Our mana's perfect. We have some interaction. I'm going to keep it, but I'm not going to feel good about it. Green-white dual land from our opponent. They can crack for a card later. And Attended Socialite is going to make this hand a lot better. Because now we have some amount of action at the start of this game. Cabaretti from our opponent, green, white, and red, and Jetmere's Fixer is the play. They can temporarily buff that for plus one, plus one, or they can permanently buff it with a counter if they're sacrificing treasure tokens to use that ability. Send in our Socialite, see if we take the trade here. If we don't take the trade, we'll probably knock out Blow the Fixer when they attack back, but if we do take the trade, we'll just allow it. Socialite is unfortunately not a citizen. They're not allowed in society. So, if that was a citizen, it would be important enough to make the observer cheaper that we'd probably knock out blow there on blocks. Civil servant, that's a citizen. Not a bad draw. Now we can play Angelic Observer next turn. 5 mana 3-3 three, three flyer, not ideal, but flyers are good in this format, it has seemed. Alright, we get to attack with Civil Servant to pop off their shield counter. 
no blocks. They do not want to pop off the shield counter, so we'll just drop our Angelic Observer here. Bouncer's beat down to go ahead and kill our Flyer by dealing 4 damage. Damage equal to their highest power. So the Dapper shield mate has just got a shield counter and it's 4 power during their turn, 2 power during ours. That's all the text on that. It's enough text though to be a real big deal for us here. Because... We are out of threats. That is outracing us. All we can really do about it is pop the shield counter off. We'd have to cast two removal spells to kill it. There's an exhibition magician from our opponent. I expect a citizen is coming down here. Don't think they would need a treasure token this late, but they could be splashing in a fourth color. It does happen a lot. They do already have one treasure, though. Citizen token it is. They are going to give that shield mate flying now. Unfortunately, I think this is just where I'm at that I'm going to have to pop two removal spells on shield mate. And he's ready to rumble. I think I would rather knock out blow it and hold ready to rumble for something else. Slightly more damage from ready to rumble, plus the flexibility of blowing up an artifact. One for Glittermonger. So we're taking two a turn because they can give things flying, but another civil servant here means we're gaining three a turn. Unless they double block... They could double block with Exhibition Magician and the 1-4 Glittermonger here to only lose one creature to kill my Civil Servant. So I think I actually want to ready to rumble their 1-4 so I can attack with Civil Servant and the only way they kill it is by blocking with all of their creatures that are left. Weirdly enough, I think this is what I want to do because I want to be able to just keep jamming in with a 3-3 lifelink here unless they wipe their own board. So they're going to wipe their board. Now it is all up to that one card left in their hand. Other than that, top deck ward is. Alright, top deck ward is. They do have two botanical plaza to cycle themselves though. Go ahead and draw a card sacrificing them. Mage's attendance, a phenomenal draw there. Two creatures off of one card. We'll pass the turn. Forest is not it. Yep, now they start jamming in for three in the sky. Attack with Civil Servant. It's only stopping one damage, but it's dealing two. Cycling the Botanical Plaza. Down to ten. Some more lands for us. Play the Riveteer's Overlook to pull out a land from our deck. Make it less likely to top deck another. Civic Gardener from our opponent. Unfortunate.
Here we are now in round two against Nikolai Bolos. Excellent hand here. Turn two, Civil Servant. Turn three, Jewel Thief. Turn four, Darling of the Masses. We just go in. Not on the play. If we were on the play, this hand would be brutal. But even on the draw, this hand is great. There's a Jewel Thief from our opponent. We'll drop our own here. Now we even have Incandescent Aria as an option. No citizen to attack in, unfortunately. Jewel Thief is a rogue. Thieves are not considered citizens. Alright, show me the trick. Moon of Safety, Scry 1. Trade the Boon of Safety for the Jewel Thief. Drop a Darling of the Masses here. It's going to be really good on this board state because it'll let our Civil Servant attack in with a lifelink, as well as let us produce tokens, which will not die to Incandescent Aria. Four, three lifelink in here. Trade for the Jewel Thief, looks like. Go up to 24. Freelance Muscle, big old 4-4 four, four here. We'll have to knock out blow that to get our Darling of the Masses to get an attack in, which is definitely going to be worth it. Although, if we draw Sanctuary Warden, uh, it's probably more worth it. Um, I guess we could Jewel Thief and Knockout Blow here instead. I'm almost definitely supposed to just slam down Sanctuary Warden. But I would also like to pull out any Pacifism-style effects from their hand first, if possible. I actually like, I like Jewel Thief Knockout Blow here. Make sure they don't have any pacifism style stuff. Make them have to use it on our Darling of the Masses. Because they are in a color pair where their white removal will get through shield counters. Their white removal will... Um, we'll exile or we'll pacify. Angelic Observer is the play. No attacks. We draw into ready to rumble. Oh, how do they kill Darling of the Masses? They double block here. So we just attack with Jewel Thief then. Attack with Jewel Thief, drop Sanctuary Warden. There's Sanctuary Warden. I'm going to re remove a counter from it, so if they do have Exile or Pacifism style removal, it still does its thing. We've got another Crowbar, but Sanctuary Warden's going to get in. We just jam in with that, I believe. I'll let them use a kill shot on this if they draw into it. Should have attacked with Jewel Thief as well. There's no reason not to. Just trying to speed things up here. In briefcase, we warm welcome during their turn. And we are wide enough to just attack all there. So the reason I'm so ready to use that shield counter there is if they really want to get rid of the shield counter, if I don't use it, they just can block and it's gone. So either way, if they top deck a removal that deals damage or something, Sanctuary Warden would be dead. Alright, warm welcome. Skycrier attended Socialite. Let's grab a Skycrier. Going wide here. Just 
attack all. Pretty sure we just attack all. Lord state is ridiculous. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They'd go to three life here. They will buff the Angelic Observer, so it will survive that fight. But they are down to three. And kill both their creatures with Incandescent Aria. I think we do that. We just lose Jewel Thief here and then kill them with tokens. And that is game. So that will be one and one. So we head into round three. Round three now. We're playing against Human Token, which is a Wizards of the Coast employee. I like this hand. We grab our green source immediately to play turn two Socialite. Then we have access to knock up, blow on three, Sanctuary Warden to close out the game. Seems pretty good. Alright, Civil Servant on two. We can play our own Civil Servant on two. Um, better than just dropping Socialite. We're not going to have a Citizen for a while here. If we want to get attacking, it's better to drop Socialite, but we probably just play Servant so we can block their attacks since they're on the play here. Okay, all three colors here, turn three. Super spicy. Just play our socialite here past the turn. Nice chill start to the game. Quite unlikely that they play a red creature here, but if they do, some kind of red hasting blitz card. We get to blow it up with knockout blow, so hold up the white source just for that. Since it will be cheaper. Ooh, Darling of the Masses is a great 4-drop to draw here. Buffs both of our attackers. And gives us the lifelink. Huge draw. I love the Selesnya Citizens deck. It just, it can pop off. And same from our opponent, Darling of the Masses with Civil Servant. Big stuff here. If we hit a land, which we do, we can blow up their Darling of the Masses and just keep our own. Keep expanding to the board, which is really good with Socialite because it's going to keep getting plus one plus one until end of turn. And it's really good with Civil Servant because we can tap this token we just made. They go down to eight. Just immense synergies with these two cards together. It's insane. These three even. Paragon of Modernity from our opponent. A 2-2 flyer. They can easily get some extra counters on two. Angelic Observer. Could definitely cast that. I'm just going to hold on to Knockout Blow, I think. That's what I want to do. Just jam in here. Maybe we were supposed to Blitz out Pugilist. Would that be lethal? That would maybe be lethal if we had just Blitzed out the Pugilist. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Actually, this is already lethal. Good lord. Oh no, it's not lethal because they have life gain? Or did I just miscount? I don't know. I probably miscounted. I'm not very good at, uh, at the maths. Alright, Civil Servant jams in. I'll just block, I guess. Game's already over either way. So the little oops attack doesn't really matter. We just had the ridiculous citizen curve out here. Yeah. 
So two and one it is. Okay, here we are now round four. We have turn three Jewel Thief. We have our two most important colors as well as the treasure token from Jewel Thief to ramp into an early Sanctuary Warden perhaps. I'm gonna keep this hand. Not perfect, of course. There's no two drop and there's no red source. But it's certainly workable. Now we've got a two drop. Makes it even better. The Civic Gardener. There's Jetmere's Fixer to get things started for our opponent. Now we have Riveteer's Overlook for our red source. I think I want to play that on turn four after we ramp out our creatures. Alright, Brokers hide out turn 3 from our opponent. Gonna gain them a life and grab a land. Choose a Plains, so green, red, and white, another Cabaretti deck. And here's our turn 3 Civil Servant is the draw. That's pretty awesome, but I would rather just Jewel Thief this turn, I think. They do have the mana to buff the Jetmere's Fixer after they block our Civic Gardener, so we don't have a good attack here, so just drop Jewel Thief past turn. Opponent is exiling Rakish Revelers to turn their mountain into a green, red, and white triome. Darling of the Masses from our opponent. Phenomenal card. We've been putting in work with that, and our opponents have as well. And we draw our own Darling of the Masses. Hmm... Let's light him up here. Can finish off a Darling of the Masses that blocks one of our cards. It would cost us our treasure token, but I think it's worth it. That card is just real powerful. But again, if we use the treasure token, we are much farther away from casting Sanctuary Warden. Let's see what they do if we attack with Jewel Thief. They'll just take it. So if we want to light up the Darling of the Masses, we'll have to sacrifice the Civic Gardener to do it. And again, might be worth it. We can do that and play a Civil Servant this turn. Next turn, even if we're farther away from casting Sanctuary Warden, we're guaranteed Darling of the Masses. We can Blitz a Strong Arm instead also. We still have a lot of plays to make before we need to play Sanctuary Warden, so I think I'm going to... I'm going to Casualty this Darling of the Masses. Caparati Courtyard, green, blue, white, and red on their board already. And here's going to be another red, white, or green source. Forest it is, they gain a life back up to 19, and Broker's Ascendancy, good lord. This is one of the biggest bombs in the format. They get a plus one, plus one counter on all of their creatures, and a loyalty counter on all of their planeswalkers at the beginning of their end step. So any token production, anything like that, they can do some really nasty things with this Broker's Ascendancy. So let's just go ahead and get our Darling of the Masses out so we can attack in with everybody, and it would only be a trade. They are going to trade with Jewel Thief here, unless they have a one-mana trick. Trade with Civil Servant it is, since that one is lifelinking. Nice. Rakish Revelers is really good to follow up a Broker's Ascendancy because it's a 5-3 and a 1-1, one, one, which is going to be a 6-4 and a 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, this Broker's Ascendancy is nuts. Um, what do we even do? We buff Darling of the Masses so that can attack in and they only kill it if they block with Revelers. Just 
2 3 doesn't matter too much, so I might rather blitz this out than hard cast it, even if I have the mana. Just because we're just really trying to get to 6 mana now, I think, to just kill him in the sky. Yeah, I think we blitz this thing out. Even though we could just hard cast it. I think I really just want to draw the card off of it. Get two little extra points of damage in here because they're not going to sack their 2 2 to kill or to stop the damage. Unless they want us to keep Darling of the Masses. And just block the 6 4, block the 2 2 on Darling. Oh! Alright, we get to keep Darling of the Masses here, hit them for 4. Immediately draw the card, so we'll play the Forest as land per turn, I guess. Doesn't really matter. Riveteer's Initiate. Can get Death Touch, so that's why they were really okay with leaving the Darling of the Masses out for a turn, as now the Initiate can trade in. Ooh, or Bouncer's Beat down in hand as well. They just have it all. Counter on their whole board again. And we've got to get three hits in with the Sanctuary Warden. We've got some chump blockers for sure. I'm not going to remove any more shield counters from Sanctuary Warden. I want to leave one on it so it doesn't die to one destroy removal spell. Two cards in hand here. I feel like if they could deal with Warden, they probably already would have. So we're going to Rocco for three. So Rocco's a really good card. Uh, three mana, three one. And then you spend X in addition to grab another creature from your deck with mana cost of X. So if they spend six mana total, they get their three mana, three one Rocco, plus any three drop from their deck. And that's what they do here. They grab Professional Facebreaker. It's also exceptionally good with Broker's Ascendancy because you're just putting more and more creatures onto their board. Um, we can kill them in two attacks, actually. I attack with Sanctuary Warden here. That puts them to seven. Then we play a Skycrier and Darling of the Masses buff Skycrier to be seven, uh, to be two power plus the five from Sanctuary Warden. That's seven in the sky next turn. So we attack here. We do not remove the shield. Then we play Skycrier. Would I rather threaten lethal or have it come out of nowhere? I think I'd rather go for surprise lethal here. By playing these instead. And then next turn we cast Darling of the Masses and all of a sudden 6 damage in the sky turns into 7 damage in the sky. All right, tap out for Rakish Revelers. That's one mana up. We should attack all here, probably. Like to block everything I can to stop them from getting treasure tokens from Facebreaker, but I guess they only get one treasure no matter what. Whenever one or more deals come at damage, you create one treasure token. So... Yeah, they're going to get a treasure token here because we can't block all four of them without losing our Sky Cryer. Well, if they attack with just three, we can, and we will. Just so they could only have a one mana out. All right. No cards. Drop Darling of the Masses. Jam in for seven. All right, there's the concession. That is three and one for my first Streets of New Capenna draft. We are in round five now, and we again have green-white turn two for Civil Servant, but we do need more lands to reach this darling of the masses. If we 
hit three mana, we can play and crack Ominous Parcel on turn three, and we do hit the third mana, so that is going to be the line that we probably take here. We grab our green source, turn two we play a Civil Servant, turn three we crack a Parcel to make sure we hit the fourth mana for Darling of the Masses for the incredible one-two punch that those cards are. Our opponent is Rakdos Aggro here, Mayhem Patrol, scary menace card, starting it off. Hits us for two immediately. We cannot block that menace. And only red and black mana from them turn three here. Very well could just be Rakdos Aggro. Witty Roastmaster is the play. Three, two. Annoyingly kind of big against our two, three. Um, yep, we definitely get our Darling of the Masses mana here. Just grab our mountain. We might actually want to trade Civil Servant to this Roast Master, unfortunately, since we are on the back foot being on the uh, being on the draw. And unfortunately can't can't even block here because they've just got the removal for it. Milled some great cards as well. Jewel Thief, Civil Servant, land. Alright. Two aggro decks face off. The one on the draw, definitely in the defensive position. Drop the Darling of the Masses and hope for the best here. Interesting. Would have expected buff on Roastmaster, so we can't block there. This must be they're trying to use a trick, plus one plus oh first strike or something. This is a scam and a half. I'm not gonna block. They just have murder they can cast anyway. That's a really good start from our opponent. Good lord. Kill the creature that does more damage here. Just two more two drops. more lands for us here. Kill one creature with parcel. Make one three three. If I make one three three, I block a two two and take four. Sure. I'm pretty sure we're dead no matter what here. I just need like one more card in hand. Jesus Christ. Yeah, Rakdos Aggro is obnoxious in this format. There's so much really cheap removal in the color pair. That's brutal. Three and two it is as we head into round six. On the play here, we have Incandescent Aria, which kind of auto wins against those Rakdos Aggro decks. So hopefully our opponent's doing the same thing and we'll get the free win here. If not, we can Ominous Parcel, grab our White Source later here, and we've got Jewel Thief as well, getting us a White Source off the Treasure Token. Gain a couple life in the early game. Pretty nice setup. This hand's pretty sweet. I like it against slower decks, I like it against faster decks. Oh, there's the Body Dropper. Is it going to be uh, the thing here? Find out. I am still going to Jewel Thief here. Corrupt Court Official. Really annoying card. We'll just discard our really expensive Angel. Darling of the Masses, but then we don't have the White Source for Incandescent Aria anymore. But that's okay, because we can use Parcel to get it if we need it. 
I think I do want to play Darling of the Masses. I'm going to attack with Jewel Thief. They can double block. Pretty fine. By us. No double block, just hit a bit. Now, let's play our Darling of the Masses. I love how there's just little citizen noises in the background. You can't tell what they're saying, but I just heard one just go, go figure. That's all I heard. One clear as day statement. Ooh, rooftop nuisance is a heck of a card here. Tap both of our creatures for two turns, draw two cards, sack their 1-1 one, one to put a plus one plus one counter on body dropper. Seems quite good. Hey, we naturally draw the white source for Pugilist, so we can just go ahead and... Or for Pugilist, for the Arya, so we can go ahead and just blow up the uh, Body Dropper if we want. Sure. Well, how greedy do I want to get on the Arya? Do I just hold off to do that to kill more things later, or do I just kill Body Dropper and clear their board? I, th I feel like I just clear their board here. I feel like that's what I'm supposed to do. Could grab the second red for the Pugilist, but it's pretty good to just blitz it out, too. It's pretty strong either way. Girder goons it is. Big old dorky 4-4. Shuts off my attacks real well. Do anything here, I guess. I guess I can play Pugilist to draw a card. Just draw a card here. Ooh, knockout blow. That is gonna solve the Girder Goons problem we've got here. We'll give them a tapped 2 2 when it dies, but. Deals with it for now. Rafine Silencer is a really good card too. They draw a card and discard a card when they play it, and when it dies, it gives minus mi minus X minus X to target creature where X is its power when it died. So pretty easy to make this a two two from its own connive trigger. So three mana two two that gives something minus two minus two when it dies is real good. So far just a one one, uh, but it's really good with like antagonize and stuff like combat tricks like that. Be really threatening. Body dropper is the play. Go for an Arya here. Getting close to just considering incandescent Arya. Now I can kind of freely just send in my devil token, actually. And then it just kills Rafine Silencer. If they block and if they don't block, I deal a damage. Kind of like that. And we can play Courier's Briefcase because we are 100% allowed to expand to our board with tokens, just don't put any more non-tokens on the board. Now Rafine Silencer has two different options for what it wants to kill when we cast our Incandescent Aria. They can kill our Devil or our Citizen. But they can only kill one of the two. And the Citizen's weaker than the Devil anyway, so... They're probably just doing minus one, minus one to our two, four when we cast Incandescent Aria. Body Dropper can turn itself into a 4-4 four, four in response to Incandescent Aria now. Because they have double black red held up. Oof, not if they cast another Body Dropper. It's Aria time. But I think we wait till post-combat, because we want to get a damage on Gerd Ragoons if possible. This is really bad. Their board state. Yeah, we have to pop Arya. And I think... The only way it works super well for us is if we can pop a... One damage on a Girder Goons here.
And we've got another token that will remain after an aria as well, which is nice. Um, hmm. That actually perfectly plays around Knockout Blow. Because I was going to say, now we could Knockout Blow and Arya and keep our Darling of the Masses. But now we can't. If I Knockout Blow the Girdergoons, they'll still do one damage to Darling of the Masses, which is enough to where it will die to an Arya. What if I don't Arya now? Jewel Thief's going to kill Silencer and Magician. Darling of the Masses will kill Girdergoons in this 1-1. One, one. They'll be down to a couple body droppers. Maybe we don't, Arya. Both of the body droppers are about to be 3-3s, three though. Yeah. Because both body droppers are going to be 3-3s, three I think we Arya instead of Knockout Blow. Let Darling of the Masses die here. But now we kill their whole board because we got to kill their token too. Cool. They will leave behind a 2-2, two -two, but we'll leave behind a 1-1 one -one Devil and a 1-1. One -one. Yep. I'm gonna hold on to this forest if they have another corrupt court official they draw into. Dash in a requisitioner to deal three, draw a card, and get a treasure, rather than just keep a three one down against one ones. Tended socialite. Not a bad draw. It's a creature. It's something. Cycling their blue black duel. Corrupt court official. There it is. Goodbye, forest. Mayhem Patrol as well. Wow. Two relevant cards drawn there, but they did draw two cards that turn. Ooh, Caldea Strongarm is huge here. We'll make our Devil Token a 3 3. It's the best thing to do with Strongarm. We definitely hard cast it here. 2 3 is big against their board state. I think we buff our Devil Token. Our Devil's pretty cool, so that's what I'm going to do either way. Whether or not we're supposed to. Alright, 2-2 two, two into the 3-2. Three, two. No, double block onto the 3-3. Three, three. Sure. We put them to one here. Off of the Devil Token's trigger. And then just go wide next turn. They can crack their treasure token to crack the tramway station draw card here. And then draw for turn. See if they've gotten out. They need two more blockers or two removal spells. They do not quite get there. That is going to be another win for us. I believe that is four and one now. Might be four and two. After that Rakdos Aggro game. I think that might have been our second loss. Yeah, Rakdos Aggro was our second loss. So four and two it is. So a nice record. I always like to get at least a four and three in my regular premier drafts. So I would be happy if this was not the Wizards account. 
Uh, this is Wizards Early Access event, so all of these cards were provided to me by Wizards of the Coast, so once again, big thank you to Wizards of the Coast, and letting you all know this is a promotional uh, video, where they gave me uh, this account to play with for free for a day. Um, but anyways, with that uh, whole legal spiel out of the way, let's head back into gameplay, head into round seven now, see how far we can take it. All right, here we go, round seven. Wish this Riveteer's Overlook could pull out a white source. Wish these were the broker's lands, but this hand's still gonna work out okay for us. We've got Jewel Thief on three. I don't think it's worth the mulligan here. Sanctuary Warden, all right, that makes things a little more awkward. I'm gonna pop the Overlook immediately here. Get one Forester Mountain out of the way to make it more likely we dig to the plains. Very, very slightly more likely we hit a plains. Tenacious Underdog. Okay, we might just be out of it immediately. This is a 2-mana 3-2. They can keep recasting from the grave for 4, and every time they recast from the grave, it comes with haste and draws them a card during their end step when they sack it. Um, so this is not the kind of start we want to see from our opponent with a hand like this, where we have to wait a little bit to set up. Oh, okay. Um, I think we're dead. <laughs> That's a, uh, that's a thing. Oh my god, yeah. Tenacious underdog into shakedown heavy. We're so dead. We are so dead. <sighs> we can let our opponent draw cards to not take damage here, but then they just draw two cards every turn which is another way to very easily lose a game. Mountains of card advantage. Oh god. Plus it untaps it, so it just gets to keep blocking even when you do that. That's an ins that's insane. That it still gets to block after letting him draw a card. Okay, well. What do I even do? If I light up Underdog, they're just going to recast it from Grave next turn. If I try to light up the Grifter, they're going to connive and make it a 2-3. I could just play a couple Civil Servants, I guess. Pretty high toughness, pretty big blockers. I would really want to hit my land next turn for Sanctuary Warden. That's probably my best bet. So we crack parcel for a land, block as much stuff as we can, and maybe just try to hit them four times with a Sanctuary Warden. But I'm, I think turn two underdog, turn three shakedown heavy is the scariest start we've seen in this format, which is saying a lot after the Rakdos deck. Okay, draw another card. They have to spend a bunch of mana and connive to kill my jewel thief here if I do this. Uh, if I double block, they can't even kill it. Well, they can kill it, they just can't save the grifter. Take three, go to 12. Snooping Newsy. Okay. Let's grab our land. Oh, I should have done that. 
I should have done that. They're just going to bounce it to my hand now, and I will have gotten nothing. The reason I didn't do that is because I'm going to want to block with it, where, where we'll lose a shield counter. So I'm definitely going to be spending shield counters on blocks. But I feel like that plays just so all in on them not having bounce style interaction. I should I should have just made the 1-1. One, because one. I can double block Shakedown Heavy with a 3-3 three, three and a 1-1 one, one also. And then still block with Sanctuary Warden and only lose one shield counter. Alright, they can pop both my shield counters here now. They could parcel kill my Jewel Thief, I guess. We take six, but we kill the underdog now. Instead. And they're tapped out. Ready to rumble, kill the Shakedown Heavy. As long as there are five or more mana values, that's a 3-3 three, three lifelink. After we kill Shakedown Heavy, they have five or more. They've got a one, a two, a four, and a zero, and they'll have a three. Oh no. Just let them draw a card next turn. Probably have to let them draw a card next turn. Light up, play Jewel Thief, light up the Newsy. Just hit here. Need to be ready for Underdog to come back to. Mm. I think we just take three from Underdog if they dump all their mana into that. Gotta let them draw a card again. We need three more hits in this. There's no way. I'm, I can't believe I'm still in it at this point. But I feel like there's, there's... I don't know. I'm trying. I'm trying my hardest. I'm fighting my heart out. I'm fighting for my life here. They've got unblockable fish they could cast from the grave, but I guess they'd rather just keep dumping all this nonsense. That works too, because they can keep drawing a million cards instead. can't really afford to kill their Shakedown Heavy, because I need to kill their Flyer to keep getting in. Oh. There's a life linker. Two more hits in the sky could get there. Theoretically. Maybe I should have been playing more aggressive with this warden. Spit out a 1-1 one -one at that point even, maybe. I feel like the moment that I use this last shield counter is just going to be murdered. Just instantaneously. Double block here or let them draw the card? I think I have to just let them draw the card for the rest of the game, pretty much. So that I have blockers for their other creatures. Another Echo Inspector. Which means if they have murder in hand, they block it with Echo Inspector and then murder. they connive for? Hypnotic Grifter is in exile, so it'll go to hand after Tolaz. 
Alright, Rafine Silencer Knives. Red oh my god, Incandescent Aria? Doesn't actually do very much here, does it? Kills Tolaz, does not kill Shakedown Heavy, does not kill Echo Inspector. That actually doesn't really do anything, I think. I think I pop Sanctuary Warden now that we have Incandescent Aria. Because that's going to pop it anyway. Can we attack all here? They get to kill our 1 1. All right. Can they kill our flyer? I'm going to feel so rude if I preemptive GG'd. I just I had an opponent do it in an earlier round. And so I was thinking of that, and I was like, that's that's probably GG, so I just said GG. Like, in an earlier round where I dropped Sanctuary Warden, then opponent went GG, and then the game still ended like a few more turns after that. I thought it was going to be like one of those positions. I really genuinely hope our opponent beats us here, because I feel bad. <laughs> I feel really bad for that GG. After the turn 2-3-2 two, two into the turn 3-6-4 menace. This is why I always play with emotes off. I'm so bad at emotes. I'm so bad at social crap. But then I was like, ah, oh, this is the streamer event. We should play with them on. Everybody's got to play with them on. They can gain a life here. They have a gain life tap land in hand. They don't die this turn. It's not over. Unless they just... No, they have Hypnotic Grifter. They can just play Hypnotic Grifter and play the game Lifeland. And they survive another turn, guaranteed. Because they are at 6. That's the worst case scenario. It's not, it's not over. Okay, yep. Hypnotic Grifter, gain a life. Off the uh, land here. Corrupt court official and gain a life. Yeah, that's pretty good. To go gain to six. Pass turn, called you a strong arm, maybe does it. I'll blitz it here, I guess, draw the card. We can remove a counter from it, still do lethal. Oh my god, it just does it. That's disgusting. I feel so bad. Oh my god. Lord Tupper, I'm sorry. I am so sorry about the GG. I, I thought it was over. The underdog into... 
shakedown heavy. That is an insane comeback. That's a super hype comeback, but I feel really bad about the emote. I'm just going to disable emotes for the rest of all time now. Uh, but very well played, Lord Tupperware. Super sorry about the emote. If you ever see this, Lord Tupperware is another limited content creator that does some very good um, draft guides and tips and tricks and all that stuff. Uh, very similar to what I do, uh, but they are more of a streamer. And I believe they have their own um, podcast and stuff. I don't know if they're on the Lords of the Limited or the other one. Um, but they're one of the big limited podcasts, I believe. Anyways, that's five and two now. And incredible record from this very first Streets of New Capenna draft as we head into round eight. All right, we are on the play. Civil Servant into Darling of the Mass is always insane. We don't have the white source though, so again, gonna have to wait here. Just gonna Riveteer's Overlook first for a green. Ominous Parcel. Well, that's uh, the play that we have, so it's the play we will do. Civic Gardener from our opponent. We'll Jewel Thief on three. Another Cabaretti deck here. Blow up the Jewel Thief with a Strangle. And hit for two, untap that land, play a three drop still. Brazen upstart it is. Well, that's pretty good. Seems good. Uh, wow. What a turn. I guess we can pop our treasure token and just play a 4-5 here. Holds off their 4-2. Unless they have the pacifism here. Plasma Jockey to shut off blocks and just hit for 9. Fair enough. Down to 10. They untap a land from the Gardener. They have a 2-drop to follow up with the untapped land. They do not. They do draw a card off of this Blitzed Plasma Jockey now. Double Darling of the Masses. Pretty cool. You start running them out, I think. No attacks here. We are down to 10. They are at 20. We need to have our defenses up. Exile a Masked Bandits onto a Plains of theirs. Got five mana now. Rakish Revelers, it is. A 5-3 and a 1-1. One, one. Pass turn. No longer have a good attack with Darling of the Masses because it just runs right into a 5-3. If we give it plus one, plus one, we have an okay attack with it. It's still not a great one. Could double up and play Servant and Briefcase here. Then I've got the fifth mana for Ominous Parcel in the future. And a pretty big field of blockers now. Got pretty solid blocks, even if we don't have good attacks. Plasma Jockey, hard cast this time. Send in the Rakish Revelers. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you got it. We'll drop the servant here. We've got another one. Play Darling of the Masses and Civil Servant this time. Kind of want to attack with strong arm now that we're going to have these uh, citizen tokens to block with. I think I want to do this. We can make sure that the tokens are two ones by playing our next Darling of the Masses here. Upstart gets to grab a creature from the top five cards of their library. And we'll see what they get. Giada, Font of Hope. That's pretty good. 2 mana, 2-2, two, two, Flying Vigilance. Strong of the Masses, number 2, and Civil Servant, post-combat. Rakish Revelers. Another 5-3 and a 1-1. One, one. Quite a lot of blockers they've got over there now. Uh, blow up the Reveler so that the strong arm gets in, kills two of their creatures minimum. They're 3 1 and 2 2. Send in the Civil Servant as well, but it'll just trade into the Plasma Jockey, which doesn't feel very good. Let's actually go like this. They double block a 3-1 and a 1-1 onto Darling of the Masses, and then Civil Servant can get in. I guess they could still double block Civil Servant. Let's actually... Let's just send in the Citizens. Alright, we're just going to trade Citizens with each other. Gets them out of the way to make these more likely to chip in in the future. Sticky fingers on the Plasma Jockey. They get to shut off a blocker, so they guarantee the hit here to get that treasure token. Cast a six drop next turn like they're masked bandits. Giada Font of Hope this turn. Depending on how they follow this up. Ooh, Lagrella. This is going to be pretty disgusting. Yeah, exile are two are four five and they're two two. Okay. So when Lagrella dies, they get a four four and we get a four five. We definitely attack here. We do the one two punch of civil servant darling of the masses combo. And then hold up our knockout blow if they go for a double block. If they don't go for a double block, we're very chill. Gaining four life here. Attack all. Oh boy. Three, four, five, six, seven. <sighs> four damage to the face here somehow. This is really suspicious. Let's just see if they've got four damage to the face. Get a treasure token. Got a hold for ransom to cast. Okay. So still got the good ability on it. Can still use knockout blow and ominous parcel. Attack with both of these. We actually have to play Jewel Thief first to have the treasure token up for knockout blow if we need to cast that right now. So we Jewel Thief, then we attack with both of these. This not a this is a citizen, so we get to tap it down. Gain four life here. They've got a knockout blow of their own. Can't counter that unless I use my own on my own creature, which seems really bad. 
So that's just going to happen. Hit for two here past turn. I don't... I mean, we're going to gain two life here, so we are going to mildly survive. I guess we could kill Lagrilla. But I don't think we want to do that, because they're going to get another blocker if we do that. I think we want to just kill Plasma Draki here. They draw a card when we do it, but... Maybe we even just kill Giada. We've got a 1 pretty much no matter what we do here. Let's kill Plasma Draki. Stop the most amount of damage, go to 2. Ginny Fey. Oof. Some very good follow-up plays and Jetmir's Fixer. Alright, yeah, we're not getting there. Can ominous, par ominous parcel to kill Lagrella. Get a couple plus some some counters. Doesn't really change anything. Yeah, we go to our turn. Ominous Parcel kills Giada in the sky, and we just take lethal on the ground. Play this land, and then we have seven mana to crack Darling of the Masses. Crack the hold for ransom on Darling of the Masses. Attack with all three, uh, but we're just dead no matter what here. They don't attack all. Well, then we're not dead. I meant good game is in we're dead if they attack all. But I guess it's one more turn to live. But that's it. Yep, they still they just attack all this time. There's no way they don't see the play this time. Still lethal, just one turn later. So five and three it will be for our first draft of Streets of New Capenna. Not bad at all. Really liked this deck. I think the biggest issue, we needed more early game white mana. We had a lot of hands that could have absolutely steamrolled um, had we had just white mana on um, on turn two. So I think I did um, actually overvalue the green sources. I should have left it what I was thinking about, which was the seven white and uh, uh, six green, because sure, the triple jewel thief can hit the white sources, but the white sources on turn two to drop down the civil serpents are really important. We had a lot of opening hands where we could have gone civil servant on two into Darling and Mass's turn four had we drawn a white source and we just did not draw the white source until after casting turn three jewel thieves. So I think that was the biggest mistake in the deck building process. We should have pushed even farther onto the white mana here, maybe even cut another mountain for another planes if we really wanted that seventh forest in that badly. Um, but yeah, we definitely had hands that could have been more explosive with the civil servants. I think even the last game was an example of that where we didn't manage to turn to civil servant, um, even though we had it in hand. So that's probably the biggest thing. Ominous Parcel played super well. The Civil Servants and the Darling of the Masses are absolutely phenomenal. Incandescent Aria won some games. Jewel Thieves did their thing. Pretty fantastic deck otherwise. Uh, some of the biggest underperformers were Attended Socialite. Um, Skycryer, I think it performed exactly how well I thought it was. I was like, I don't know, it's okay. We have some cards that care about citizens. It's fine with that. Um, and Flyers are just decent in the format, so it did matter in some games to help get that lethal with Sanctuary Warden. Still did its thing, it did its work. Um, and Angelic Observer was kind of similar. We played it as a 5-mana 3-3-1 three, three, game. It wasn't that good there, but we did play it as a 3-mana three, 3-3 three, three, flyer 1 game. I don't know. Don't love the Angelic Observer for sure. But overall, super sweet deck. Love the green-white citizens theme. Uh, but that is going to end my first draft of Streets of New Capenna. 
If you're interested in seeing some more drafts and seals of Streets of New Capenna or just more Magic Arena limited content in general, stick around on the channel. I do these videos as close to daily as I can. You're at the right place. Just like, comment, and subscribe if you like the YouTube recommendations to send you some more of these videos. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.